All right, so what's going on, y'all? This one reads, the nonlinear spring has the force deformation relationship. Force is equal to K delta squared. We have to express the total potential energy of the spring and use this potential energy to obtain the equilibrium value of displacement. So let's go. All right, so before we get started, I just wanted to let you know that potential energy, um, doesn't come up too much maybe for like a week at most if not half of that two classes per week right so maybe just one class but the overall goal of the, these problems is finding the total potential energy of the spring which is u plus omega now u is the internal strain energy um, usually you'll use the spring to find u and then this potential energy is due to external forces, so the 500. So that's kind of a good way to remember it. Um, U, you gotta focus on the spring, and then for omega, you gotta focus on the load. Um, let's go ahead and start the problem, right? So we got our knowns, and again, this is the main goal. So knowns, step one, they give us the K, it's a thousand. And I will go in depth into this problem, so I hope you don't have too many questions. Um, but if you do, just comment and I'll get back to you, hopefully soon, because this stuff will leave my brain again. I had to dig up some old, old notes for this kind of stuff. Uh, force is 500 pounds. This is the positive x direction in most cases for springs, right? When you compress, that displacement is positive. It's not negative. So that's just how springs roll, so. And then um, another thing before I continue, a nonlinear spring, if you don't know, it's kind of like a helical spring. So it starts off very big, right? And then it kind of just sinks in little by little. So to displace it one inch, it's, let's say, right? In this case, right, we'll use K a thousand. To displace it one inch, you'll require a thousand pounds. But to displace it two inches, it's not 2,000. You don't double the force just because you double displacement. For a normal spring, yeah, right? Force is equal to kx. If you want to force, okay, so force is equal to kx for a regular spring. So these are these go hand in hand. I'm going to draw it very small, but the graph is linear, right? If you plot x and force, that result is linear, right? So if you do want to move it one inch, you're going to require 1,000. If you want to move it two inches, you'll require 2,000 etc in this case this is a non-linear spring this is not the case they give us the relationship right here so it's a parabola so you'll see what i mean right now let me just go ahead and write one more thing the relationship so force is equal to k delta squared okay so that's the relationship of this helical spring now i told you right um force to x for a linear spring that's the relationship right there it's all equal in this case when you graph it i'll make a i'm gonna try to make it as even as possible um, i mean um accurate as possible not just uh bs it because once we get our answer you're gonna see how that makes sense okay so we're gonna graph delta or x it's the same thing delta x and force now for internal strain energy remember you use the spring i told you in the beginning of the video um that's the area under the curve so this curve right here to find the energy of this you find the area it's integration and that's a very simple integral when you do that i haven't done any videos yet but i will um you get one half kx squared and you should remember this from physics right that's the energy of a spring potential energy of a spring so um that's kind of uh what we're gonna see here but in this case it's force is equal to k delta squared okay so what that means is, let's go ahead and plot some numbers, right? Um, let's make it a nice one, two, three, four. Let's go one, two, three, four. So this displacement, we're gonna do it in, this is in inches, obviously, right? Pound over inch. So this is one inch, two inch, three inch, and four inches. This is in intervals of 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, and 4,000 pounds. So check this out. If, in this case, we're applying 500, but forget this for now. 
if you apply 1,000, assume it's 1,000, you're gonna move one inch, right? Kind of makes sense. You require 1,000 pounds for one inch. So that point is right here, okay? One inch, it's 1,000 pounds. If you obviously apply zero force, it's not gonna move at all, so zero, zero, right? Zero displacement, zero force, whatever. If you apply, um, if you wanna move it two inches, plug in two for delta, and again, and this equation is kind of funky the way I'm explaining it, but if you do that, you will get four. And in that case, two goes all the way to 4,000. So you see how crazy that is? If you want to move it one inch, it's easy. It's 1,000 pounds. But if you want to move it just double that distance, you got to require four times as much force. So that is a parabola. You might not be able to see it because you kind of could. It's a parabola. So remember, if your force is equal to kx, it's a nice straight line in this case because it's a non-linear spring it's a force is equal to k delta squared it's a parabola so what we do is we try to find the area under this curve and that's very easy so pretend this is x if it makes you see things easier but this is the the step so you're going to integrate there's no boundaries right it's not from zero to two it's just in general so we're going to go from zero to delta and again if you get confused just put x the function is k delta squared, and it would be d delta, right? And again, if you change to x, just this is x, this is x, this is x, same thing. But if you do that, you will get, and this is um, equal to u, forgot to tell you, right? For the area under a curve, that's the potential energy for these. For, for a, this is called the load displacement curve. So the area under those curves, it's potential energy. So the, I'll keep the arrow. U, right? We're focused on internal strain energy. U is equal to um, K delta cubed, right? Over three. That's it. So that is also equal to U, right? I'll change it to X. Well, because we're going to need it in X, not because I'm trying to baby you, but ah, it's U equals. Damn it. Try not to erase too much, but shit happens. Okay, U is equal to KX over 3. So we're going to need this because, again, this is our main goal, pi P. We found U already, so that's it. So I hope you understood that. We're done with U. Um, that was the biggest thing in this video. This is the hardest thing to grab. You gotta recognize what a nonlinear spring is to help you see the load displacement curve easier. But you kind of have to see how these points are plotted. Um, in this case, they give you the relationship. I don't remember seeing anything crazy like this on the exam, but this is just so you can know. So cool, we found you. Now we wanna find omega. So omega, that is easy. That is just negative fx. If you wanna do, um, I'm not going to explain the theory bef before uh, behind negative fx and then normally it's one half kx squared for you but you should probably read the book if you're interested but that's pretty much it this is straightforward cloud this up we're going to need it so that means pi p is equal to um, u plus omega which is kx cubed over 3 minus f of x. All right, cool. So plug in the values, right? k is equal to 1,000. 500 for force. We will get pi p is equal to a, well, 1,000 divided by 3. That's, I'm going to make it a nice 333. x cubed minus 500x so that's the answer it says express the total potential energy of the spring so this is it right here that's the expression for the total potential energy of the spring due to internal strain energy u and then external forces all right so that's the first part now it says use this potential energy to obtain the equilibrium value of displacement so if you apply 500 you're going to push it in, and it's going to be there, right? Obviously, it's going to stand still. You want to find out what that x distance is, 
right? If you push it in with 500, it's gonna move in, and what is that X distance? So it's easy. So what you do is that value is found when you set the equation equal to zero. Not the equation, I mean um, the derivative of the equation. So you do that, I'm gonna write partial. In these problems, you do partials, but in this case, you could have just done D since it's one variable. Uh, well, you set the partial equal to zero with respect to X. So just take the derivative, that's it. So three times three, 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 that is a thousand x squared right it's just basic calculus minus 500 cool so do the math move 500 to the other side divided by a thousand you will get x squared is equal to 0 0.5 finally at 0 0.5 take the square root you will get 0 0.707 inches and you use the positive right it's a positive negative technically but you really can't have negative in this case, right? You're just moving the spring, it's displacement. So it's just 0 0.707, that's how much it's gonna move. So we will need this X value, cloud it up. And before we keep going, does it make sense? So this is how you make sense of it. So you remember how I told you it's not a one for one, like in this case up top? I mean, I'm not sure if you can see it right there. Um, if you move one inch, you'll move a thousand, and two inches, two thousand, three inches, three thousand. It's even. Well, that's not the case here, remember? Um, if that was the case, 0 0.5 inches would result for zero. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. If you apply 500 force, which is halfway here, it is not halfway here. It's a little bit more. It's like right here. And that is 0 0.707 inches. So that's the X right there. This X. That's right there and then that's 500 and that makes sense it's it, um if it was a perfect linear spring that this value would have been 0 0.5 inches for 500 right at the center but that's how you verify that so it kind of makes sense we're on the right track um now that we have the where you will have the minimum potential energy of the spring you use this number and plug it back into this equation and see what that potential energy value is so pi p of x in this case it is x is equal to 0 0.707 right is equal to 333 0 0.707 cubit minus 500 times 0 0.707 all right so pi p it, of this 0 0.707 is equal to 117.73 minus 353.55 now if you do the math you won't get these exact numbers but that's because i use the original 707 digit 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 all these digits that were after it but you'll get something close Pi P is equal to 0 0.707 is equal to negative 235.82. And this is in pound inch. And that's the answer. So this problem, I'm gonna do other videos, simpler videos, just that I didn't print them out at work, but uh these this is a pretty crazy problem but at least you know how to do it now hopefully um the other ones you rarely see kx cubed over three they're usually one half kx squared but in this case because it's a parabola right um it got a little bit more complicated but that's the answer um i'll do a couple more um just next week nothing for now yep that's the answer